Doff our homily for the third Sunday of Easter. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Another beautiful gospel. And just want to focus on a few points. One was how the world, the world is yearning for peace. The world is yearning for the peace of Christ. As a young priest, I received a, a phone call on my cell phone. And this gentleman said, you don't know me, Father, but I know one of the guys connected to your order in New York, and he's been my friend and roommate, and we were friends for a long time. And since he got to know you guys, he just developed a tremendous amount of peace and joy. And I want that joy. You know, I don't have it. So could we meet? I said, sure, happy to meet. Let's talk about it. So a couple days later, I met him for breakfast. And he basically told me, he said, Father, I've only had one moment of peace in my whole life when I was flying over the Atlantic Ocean, drinking a cocktail, and for five seconds, I felt peace. I'm thinking, poor guy, you know, poor guy. So I said, tell me about yourself. I said, well, I make a lot of money. I make a million dollars a year. I'm very successful. I'm currently living with a French model. It's very attractive. I have spent the last 15 years having fun as a bachelor, getting into a lot of trouble, making a lot of bad decisions. And, you know, I really, I was raised Catholic, but I haven't practiced my faith in a long time. And I'm not happy. <laughs> you know, I'm not a happy guy. In fact, he even told me he was taking a horse tranquilizer to be able to sleep. Imagine that, horse tranquilizer. I think I would die if I took one of those. Anyway, the point is, you know, that's not too far from the reality of a lot of people. People that are trying to stuff the world, trying to stuff pleasure, trying to stuff drugs, alcohol, into the God hole. There's a God hole. Only Jesus can fill it. You know, in, in this gospel, Jesus opens by saying, peace be with you. Because he was with the apostles. And it starts with that. We can't have peace without Christ. You can't have peace without prayer. You can't have peace without spending time with the Lord where he is. You know, I have a little dinner party in a little bit I'll be heading to. And before I go, I'm going to hang out with Jesus in the chapel because I want to give these folks, not Mike and not even Father Michael, I want to give them the peace of Christ. I want to fill my heart with that peace. I want to go to where he is. Let that peace rub off on me. And then hopefully it'll be contagious, you know. So one of the perks of being a priest is that we have that peace of Christ. He gives us that gift. We're his friends. We're giving our life to him. And he rewards that. He blesses that. And the second pathway to peace is, you know, in joy. I think peace and joy for me are synonymous. Is to be a selfless person, you know. Lou Holtz, the famous football coach from Notre Dame, said there's two types of people in the world. There's a person who walks into a room and asks, what can I get out of all these people? What can these people do for me? How can these people benefit me? How can these people make me happy? That's one type of person. Another type of person who walks into a room and looks around, what can I do to make everyone in this room happy? How can I serve people? What can I do to lighten the load? How can I make someone laugh? Who's crying? Who's sad? Who can I pick up? And it's funny, the people that are kind of looking for happiness, living to be happy, are miserable. The people that are living to make others happy are happy, you know? The only thing I would say, and this is very important too, is that your intention matters. You know, your intention matters. I'm going to be with a few couples tonight, and, and my intention is hopefully to share Christ's love with them. 
My intention is to let the love of Christ work through me to them, you know, to them. That's my intention. That's my goal. I'm not doing it. I'm going to try not to do it so I'll get the appreciation and esteem and love from them. That shouldn't be my, my goal. I'm not loving to get love. I'm loving because Christ wants to love through me and he'll take care of me. I don't need it from other people. I don't need human appreciation. I don't need human pats in the back. I need Christ. I need his peace. And he blesses his friends and he blesses those who serve him and are willing to sacrifice for others. Amen. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.